fire, flood, equipment failure, even human error can all cause chemical accidents that can quickly become uncontrollable. How you prepare for such a crisis will have a profound effect on your job, your business, and even the pesticide industry. Will you be ready when a crisis strikes? Dave? Yes, Mary? Sally just called. He blew a hose on the sprayer in front of the kindergarten, and he sold about half his load. The principal panicked and sent everybody home. What do you do in this situation? You're the company representative, and your actions will directly affect the final outcome of this crisis. Your reputation and your business is on the line. What do you do? Okay, Mary, pull the delivery invoice and find out what Don was hauling. Get the crisis plan and MSDS. Then call the fire department, Chemtrek, and the state. Track down the principal and make sure everyone's okay. Keep me posted on the situation and tell Don I'll be on the scene as soon as I can. I'm about 35 minutes away right now. In St. Lawrence today, a hazardous chemical has spilled from a spray truck right in front of the St. Lawrence Early Childhood Center. 76 students and staff members have been evacuated, and residents in the area are concerned. They fear that more evacuations may be necessary. This is Laura Trendle reporting. Okay, that's a wrap. Come up here a second. Excuse me, are you the driver of the truck? Yeah. I'm Laura Trendle from Channel 31 News, and you are? Uh, Don Smith. When you're at an accident site where your company is involved, the media will consider you the company representative. The public statements you make will directly influence how the community views you and your company. Even an innocent mistake could end up in controversy or worse, a lawsuit. Journalists report the facts as they hear and interpret them. By remembering the three C's, communicate, cooperate, but don't confront, you can provide information to the media without jeopardizing your reputation. Turn to the Handling the Media section of the workbook and follow along as we cover guidelines you should always follow when being interviewed by a reporter. Be prepared. Organize your facts, anticipate questions, and plan concise answers. Respond quickly. Avoiding reporters leaves them free to look for other, less qualified sources. Deal with an issue early to avoid misinterpretation and fear. Stay calm. Avoid confrontation. Never argue or lose your composure. If a question contains words you dislike, don't repeat them. Politely correct hostile or inaccurate remarks in your answer and avoid assigning blame. Be clear, concise, and consistent. Make sure your answers can be easily understood. Don't use technical terms or jargon unless you're prepared to explain them. Be factual. Avoid extreme positions. Stick to the topic at hand and don't be led into unfamiliar territory. Never say no comment. This invites speculation. If you can't answer a question, simply explain that you lack the information to give a proper answer. If possible, direct the reporter to a better source or offer to get back to them with an update. Don't rely on off the record. There's no legal obligation for a reporter to keep anything off the record. If you have a comment you don't want publicized, don't say it. Never speculate. You've asked a hypothetical question. State what you know at the time and let the reporter know you'll be available later for follow-up questions. Be honest. Never lie or stretch the truth. If you don't know an answer, admit it. This is the driver for Midway Chemical, Don Smith. Don, can you tell us what happened here? Well, uh, the main hose blew. Over half the load leaked out before I got it plugged up. Uh, but it's not my fault. Uh, you know, the mechanic must have been slacking off. I don't know how a bad hose could have got by him. What kind of hazardous chemical is this? Is it poisonous? Uh, it's an RUP, a, a pesticide. It's toxic, but it won't kill anybody. You're not supposed to breathe it in or get it on your skin. And if you get it in your eyes, it'll burn really bad. We have reports that two children have been taken to the hospital. What are they suffering from? 
I don't know. I, I didn't know anyone was sick. What threat does this toxic pesticide pose to the environment? Well, if it got in a ditch, it would kill some of the weeds, and, and there's a culvert that drains into the creek down the road. If it gets in there, I suppose some fish would die. But you don't have to mention that. Well, how serious is this chemical spill? Uh, it's just a big pain. Uh, I've seen lots worse. Has Midway Chemical had spills like this before? No comment. How common is this type of chemical spill? Well, everybody gets busy and customers are anxious. You start rushing around and things can happen. Is there somebody else from Midway Chemical that I could talk to for more information? No, I don't think so. Like I said, this is a busy time of the year and we're all stretched to the limit. I've been working 18-hour days this whole week and I haven't even had lunch yet. All I want to do is get this thing cleaned up and get back on the road. Now, I gotta go. Wait a minute, I got more questions. Hold on. Okay. Have to go with what we've got. Okay, are you rolling? Still rolling. The busy planting season is being blamed for a dangerous chemical spill that's happened today in St. Lawrence. A faulty hose that hadn't been checked on a truck from the Midway Chemical Company erupted and spilled a toxic pesticide on the road in front of the St. Lawrence Early Childhood Center. Students from the center between the ages of three and six had to be evacuated. We have reports that at least two children were taken to a hospital. No word on their condition. The driver of the truck says the pesticide involved can be irritating to the skin and the eyes and that it should not be inhaled. He also says that it could kill fish in a nearby stream. We are waiting for more information, but it appears that there may still be a danger to this community. It also raises the question as to why Midway Chemical would allow a sleep-deprived worker to transport a dangerous chemical such as this. This is Laura Trendle reporting. It's obvious Don wasn't informed about how to deal with the media. With proper training, he likely would have handled the situation much differently. Okay, that's a wrap. Excuse me, I'm Dave Myers. I'm the sales manager for Midway Chemical. If you have any questions regarding this situation, I'd like to answer them. Yes, Mr. Myers, I'm Laura Trendle from Channel 31 News. I would like some more information about this. What would you like to know? Just a moment. Are you rolling? We still have speed. All right. Okay, Mr. Myers, what caused this spill? Your driver tells us it was a faulty hose. A hose did rupture, but we don't know for sure why. Our equipment is all top of the line. We've never had any problems with it, so I really don't want to speculate. I will tell you how it happened when I get more information. I would also like to point out that we will be conducting safety inspections on all of our trucks today as a precaution. Okay, your driver told me that he has been working 18-hour days. Could sleep deprivation have anything to do with causing this? Well, Don's a hard worker. It's true, he's been working long days. You ought to know what those are like. However, there's no suggestion that there was any human error involved in this. In fact, if it wasn't for Don's quick action, more chemical would have been lost. It's just an unfortunate incident that's going to inconvenience some people for the day. Mr. Myers, can you tell me, does this chemical pose any danger to the community now? No. The product which we've cleaned up is a herbicide, which is used by many of the area's farmers for weed control. It's 99% water, 1% product. Poses no danger to the community at all. Unfortunately, some of it was spilled on the street, and the cleanup is blocking the road. However, we'll have it all returned to normal and cleaned up within the hour. Well, if this pesticide poses no threat, can you explain why the school had to be evacuated and why two children were sent to the hospital? The school was evacuated by the principal as a precaution. This is standard procedure when a situation like this occurs. As for the children, I've been in contact with the hospital and physicians from the product's manufacturer have also talked with the children's doctors. We know for sure that what they're experiencing is not because of the chemical. If you'd like some more information about that, you can call County Hospital. Okay, what about the environment? Now, your driver told me that there's the possibility of a fish kill here. What about that? No. The herbicide hasn't even reached the ditch. There's no reason that it will. The fire department has the spill contained on the pavement, and they've already started to clean up. However, as standard procedure, again, we will be monitoring this site for the next year with state officials. Has Midway Chemical ever had a spill like this in the past? In 17 years, 
This is the second time that this has happened. We treat these situations very seriously and take every precaution to prevent them. But we also prepare to control these accidents in case they do happen to protect the community and the environment. We meet with the fire department every year and practice how to best deal with such accidents. Will the children be able to return to school safely tomorrow? Yes, because of the quick response of our driver, Don Smith, and the local fire department, the spill will be cleaned up shortly. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a lot of work to do. Please, call me if you need more information. All right, Mr. Meyer, thank you. Okay, let's wrap it up. All right, take three in three, two, one. Students and staff at the St. Lawrence Early Childhood Center had to be evacuated earlier today because of a pesticide spill. It's not known why a hose ruptured and caused the spill, but Midway Chemical Sales Manager Dave Myers says the spill poses no threat to the community nor the environment, and he says children at the school were never in any danger. Also, he credits the quick response of Midway Chemical employees and the St. Lawrence Fire Department for helping keep the spill under control. This is Laura Trendle reporting. You've learned how to deal with the media during a crisis, but what about your customers and the community? How you handle emergency phone calls is just as important as dealing with the media. Emergency calls can range from a resident concerned about chemical drift to someone worried about their child's safety to a reporter looking for information. When the telephone rings, always remember to take five. Take the caller's name, affiliation, the nature of their call, the urgency of the situation, and their phone number. Then think SOS. Seek assistance. Contact a supervisor, the chemical manufacturer, and any necessary authorities. Organize and share facts with these people, and stay involved. Continue to maintain communications, gather facts, and plan follow-up activities. Handling calls might seem simple, but in the heat of the battle, a mistake could result in a lost customer or worse, a legal battle. Midway. This is Ruth Lyman. My daughter was at school today where that poison was spilled. She's been sick to her stomach for the last hour. What should I do? What would you do? Mrs. Ryman, I don't know for sure what your daughter is experiencing, but the herbicide that we cleaned up today posed no danger to the children. A little boy was taken to the hospital, but it ended up that he had the flu, and a little girl was taken to a clinic by her mother as a precaution. Oh? Now, what you choose to do is up to you. If you want to take your daughter to a doctor, I'll have a physician from the chemical company talk to your doctor about your daughter's condition. I think I'd better. Well, if you have a second, I'd like to get your phone number, your daughter's name and age, and where you'll be taking her. That's right. The doctor's name is Nancy Miller. She's in the acute care department of County Hospital. Number is 119-555-9150. Thank you. Hello, Mrs. Stevens. This is Dave Myers of Midway Chemical. I got a message you called. That's right. My house is right across the street from the school where that awful stuff was spilled. Now, my roses are dying. Those flowers cost me a lot of money, and I expect you to pay for them. That stuff's killing my roses. What would you do? Well, Mrs. Stevens, it's highly unlikely that the incident today could have affected your roses. Really? However, I'll send someone out tomorrow to make sure. If, in fact, the accident did cause the damage, we'll pay for it. Good. However, if your roses are suffering from something unrelated to today's event, we'll be happy to give you advice on their care, but we won't be able to pay for it. I'm sure you understand my point. Well, all right. Mrs. Stevens, could I have your address, please?
Midway, Dave Meyer speaking. This is Mark Downing, principal of St. Lawrence Early Childhood Center. Mr. Myers, you have a lot of explaining to do. I want to know just what went on today. We can't have deadly poisons being spilled in town. Thank God no one was seriously injured. Maybe we shouldn't allow your company to haul those poisons through town anymore. We just can't have this type of thing happening. What would you do? Mr. Downing, I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to talk to you at the scene today. I want you to know that I'm as concerned about this as you. However, no one was in any danger today. You know, we've been driving our trucks through town for 17 years and no one has ever been hurt. The products we haul are the same ones used on farms and lawns all through the area. Uh -huh. Maybe the best solution is for the fire chief and me to get together with you and propose an emergency response plan. Also, if you'd like, someone from Midway could give a talk to your students about farm chemical safety. Many of your students come from farms. It's always good to remind them to be safe. Okay, that's a good idea. Again, I'm sorry for the inconvenience today, and I'd like to thank you for your quick action. It always pays to be safe. Why don't I drop by and we can discuss this further? Mr. Ryman? Hi, this is Dave Myers at Midway Chemical. I talked to your wife earlier and I was just checking back to see how your daughter's doing. Great. That's fine. By planning now, you will be better prepared to handle a business crisis, no matter how simple or severe. To help you begin your crisis management file, we've provided a reminder card with guidelines for handling the media and emergency phone calls. We've also included an emergency directory for you to fill out with the important phone numbers you need to know when a crisis strikes. Make copies and keep them by every phone in your dealership. By planning for the worst, you can control any situation to ensure both the safety of the community and the future of your business. You can control the spread of fear and misunderstanding during a crisis. It just takes preparation and proper crisis management planning. If you take the time to prepare, you will be ready when a crisis strikes.